Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. I'm continuing now my series on the symbols of the Holy Spirit. And right now, I'm going to be focusing in on the symbol of water, which reveals the refreshing, life-giving nature of the Holy Spirit. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship, and then we're getting right into this lesson. Here's Stephen Moctezuma. So years ago, my grandfather took me to go and see a powerful man of God preach the gospel. Now, this man that we went to go see preach has been in my life a spiritual father and a mentor 
and there are many things that I've learned from him. My grandfather and I went to this service, and it was actually held here in Southern California at an arena that they could seat, like I think, like 20,000 people or more. And so we arrived to the service, and when we arrived, there were thousands of people already packing the stadium. We walked in and we tried to find a seat, and as soon as we entered into the building, they announced to us that that level of seating was completely full. We ran up to the next floor and they said, this level is completely full. We ran up again to the next level and they were already filling up that level, but we finally found a few seats that we could use, or a couple of seats that we could use. So we're sitting in the service, the power of God's moving, the worship was awesome. And all of a sudden, this man of God says, I want every preacher of the gospel to get down here. Now, mind you, at that time, I was 14 years old. I was already preaching the gospel. I started preaching at 13. And I knew that I wanted to get down there and receive an impartation. Now, the Holy Spirit can touch you anywhere, anytime. But God also uses people to flow through. So I knew that God was going to touch my life in a special way. So I start running down, but I realized by the time I got halfway down that the crowds were already beginning to press onto the platform. And by the time I got to the floor of the arena, the stage was several dozen feet from me and the crowds had backed me up all the way to where I didn't think I was going to get access at all. So I go around the crowd and I find myself pinned between the crowd and the stage and there was no way I was going to access the stairs as this man of God went back and forth laying hands on people. Now I'll never forget what I sensed in that moment. It was the first time in my life I had ever sensed anything like it. I'm standing right up against the platform. The crowd is pressing me into the stage. Not to where I couldn't breathe, but to where I couldn't move. And I remember being up against the platform, and I'm looking onto the platform, and it was about uh, shoulder height to me, the platform was. And I watched this man of God go back and forth, and I'm seeing the people react to the power of the Holy Spirit as he's laying hands on them. The choir and the worship team are singing, Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. And I realized in that moment that my body was trembling. The power of God had physically manifested and I was sensing this shaking come over me. And off of the platform I could feel what were like waves and currents. I'm telling you before God, I sensed this in my body, my physical being. It was like waves were coming off of the platform, waves of water, like there was a river on that stage and I was standing in that river. Suddenly I look up and there's a security guard standing over me. For some reason, I don't know why, he broke protocol, stretched his hand out to me, pulled me onto the platform, and then helped me get prayer. I remember that as I was walking toward that man of God, I felt like I couldn't even stabilize my stance because it was as if the ground was shifting under me, as if I was standing in an actual river. And all I remember is this. I saw that man of God approach me. He was praying in tongues. His face was all red because he was praying fervently in tongues. I closed my eyes. I lifted my hands. And he barely even touched the side of my face. And I had not realized, I didn't realize, that I had fallen out under the power of God. And I opened my eyes. I'm on the floor. And I see my body shaking in that current of power. Next thing I know, I'm being picked up by some people on the sides of me, and I couldn't even feel them picking me up. They took me off the platform, walked me down the stairs. I could barely stand. I remember looking around, and they had chairs laid out for people who were unable to make it back to their seats because people were just shaking so, so, so I should say, violently, but it's, it's you know, not, not violently as in it hurt them, but they were shaking um, very intensely. And we come off the platform and they sat us on the chairs and I looked around, there are several people who couldn't even get back to their seats. That experience in the presence of God marked me in a way that I'll never be able to fully explain. And in that moment, there was a refreshing that came on me. There was a life-giving manifestation of the Holy Spirit's power that touched my life. That was that refreshing flow of the river of life 
In John chapter 7, verses 37 to 39, the scripture says this, On the last day, the climax of the festival, Jesus stood and shouted to the crowds, Anyone who is thirsty may come to me. Anyone who believes in me may come and drink. For the scriptures declare rivers of living water will flow from his heart. When he said living water, he was speaking of the Spirit who would be given to everyone believing in him, but the Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus had not yet entered his glory. The Holy Spirit is that river of living water which brings life. Now in Psalm, the book of Psalms, chapter number one, the scripture says this, Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They are like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither, and they prosper in all they do. When a tree is planted by a river, its roots go deep. Its roots become strong. And that tree, according to the scripture, bears fruit in each season, not in some seasons, there is this supernatural abundance that comes upon that life and we can bear the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, and so forth. We can bear those fruits in each season even when we are facing hardships. Why? Because we are planted by the river of life who is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit brings life. Joel said that the Spirit would be poured out, which is a reference to him as, his, as, as you would refer to water. Joel chapter 2, verses 23, and then 28 through 29 say this, Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out, there's that phrase, pour out like water, pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, and also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Water cleanses, water quenches thirst, water refreshes, water gives life. Wherever the river of the Spirit flows, there is life. There is refreshing. There are deeply rooted trees. The Holy Spirit cleanses your soul. He quenches your spiritual thirst. Those of you who desire that something more, you know there's more to your walk with the Lord. The Holy Spirit is that someone more. The Holy Spirit is that river, that something more. The Holy Spirit refreshes your being and His flow adds to you strength. His flow adds to you life. And that river that's flowing through you, that river of the Spirit of God that moves about you, has a mist that comes off of it. Not only does the river cause life and vegetation to, fl to, to flourish, but it also has a mist that flows off of it. If you ever get around a river that's rushing, you'll notice that you'll get wet even before you jump into the river because of that mist that's coming up out of the river. When you have the Holy Spirit in you, there's a holy mist around you. There's a holy mist that affects the atmosphere, that causes those around you to sense something refreshing about you, something life-giving about you. They can't quite put their finger on it, but there's something about you that gives life. There's something about you that causes those fruits of the Spirit to flourish in every season. There's something about you that quenches a spiritual thirst. I like to say there's not something about you, there's someone about you, and that is the person of the Holy Spirit. This life-giving river of God flows through our lives. Water represents this side of the Holy Spirit. He is life-giving. He is refreshing. He quenches spiritual thirst and He cleanses us. That is the power of the person of the Holy Spirit. That is the side of His nature that is revealed by the biblical symbol of water. And now I pray today, right now, that that same river about which I'm talking, that same mighty flow 
will move through me, right through that camera, and touch you right where you are. You're about to be refreshed in the river of the Spirit. I want you to get ready. I want you to let your faith and expectation rise. And ask Him, it's so simple, ask Him to flow through you. The, the river of the Spirit is going where it's going. It does not change directions. So the key is surrendering to that river. You can't change His flow, but you can jump into the river. And you jump into the river by faith. He wants to refresh you. He wants to quench your spiritual thirst. He wants to give you life and divine energy. He wants to cleanse your soul. He wants to cause you to bear that fruit. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, right now I pray that this mighty river would flow and touch those watching. Father, I pray that the river of life would flow and begin to refresh that one who's weary. Help them to surrender and jump into the river, I pray. Use them for your glory. In the name of Jesus, somebody is watching me right now. There's an issue with, there's an issue with your eyes, but it's not visible. It's something behind the eyes, like in the socket. I don't know what that is, but God is healing it right now. I thank you, Jesus, that the healing power is flowing right now. Lord, I give you the glory. A dislocated knee is being healed right now. I thank you, Jesus, for your healing touch that's now flowing. There's somebody watching you. I see you smashed your finger. It was, it was, and there's, a, there's swelling, and, and, and it's a very painful uh, injury that you have. But I pray right now in the name of Jesus that God would make you whole. I give you the honor, Lord name of Jesus. There's a Dustin watching me. I don't know what's going on with you, but you were just asking the Lord to speak to you. And he wants to use your life. And he wants to touch you for his glory. It's time to surrender. Father, touch each one, I pray, in the name of Jesus. Wow, and I want you to say, Amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Look, you might be looking for a home church right now, somewhere to call home. Why don't you join the Spirit family and gather with us in spirit? When you sign up to Spirit Church, Every single week, I'm going to send you a brand new teaching, fresh from heaven. And Stephen Moctezuma will put together a nice worship service for you to enjoy online. So go ahead right now, davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Join the spirit family today. And now to your comments. And these comments come from my teaching, Symbols of the Holy Spirit, The Cloud. If you have not watched that teaching, I recommend that you go back and watch it this particular lesson talks about the very glory of God. And if you've been praying about wanting to understand the presence of Jesus, the glory of God more, and especially how the Holy Spirit reveals that presence, then you need to make sure and go watch Symbols of the Holy Spirit, The Cloud. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe, click that notification bell so that you can receive all of the notices when we put out content. And if you're watching us on our social media platforms, be sure to also follow us there. Now, here are the comments. Oh, one more thing. If you want me to potentially read your comments on next week's edition of Spirit Church, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now, and I may read your comment next week. So, these comments, once again, come from Symbols of the Holy Spirit, The Cloud. Child of Light 5778 writes, When you were describing how the cloud conceals the presence of God at the very beginning of the video, I felt a cloud coming out of my screen. I was so overwhelmed that for a moment, I couldn't continue to watch. Walking with Christ writes, I love this version of the anthem, I'm in awe. And that's another worship song from Stephen Moctezuma. The anthem that he covered was also on his album of worship covers. If you'd like to listen to his music, be sure to type in Stephen Moctezuma on your preferred music platform. 
Mezi Cousseau writes, even in the midst of this pandemic, your messages always inspire and strengthen my spirit. I always feel the connection whenever you pray at the end. Thank you, Pastor David and Brother Stephen. Hoping to see you all in India someday, if it's God's will. Love from Nagaland, India. And we are prayerfully putting together a trip to India. We have to put together some of the final details, but we're praying about it. We're trying to find connections on the ground who we can trust. So pray us in, and I know the Lord will put it together. Fernando writes, thank you, Pastor David. As you were praying, I could feel the breath of the Holy Spirit and the atmosphere turning electric. Wow, that's the glory of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this anointed teaching. Yes, several people are reporting from our videos having divine encounters while watching the content. Why? Because this is the Holy Spirit's channel. And the final comment that I'm going to read comes from Melissa T who writes, I just joined your ministry. Honestly, I have been in need of a home church. I rejoice that God uses you and everyone in your team. Brother Diga, I believe that this is the first step to finally help me become closer to getting better because I won't be alone in this journey. Although I have grown up in the church, I've never felt fully accepted. Your ministry makes me feel worthy of the cross. Well, Melissa, that blesses me to know that the Lord is using this ministry to pull you unto himself. And Melissa's not alone, guys. There are people being touched all around the world. And when you hear these testimonies, I want you to listen to me. I know the video is getting closer to ending and maybe you see something else you want to click on and watch, but stick with me just for a moment. Whenever you hear these comments, it's very easy to kind of just go, oh, that's wonderful and just brush over it. But I want you to realize these comments and these stories represent real people with real experiences, with actual occurrences. These are lives that are being transformed. Now, I thought of this scripture, it's found in Hebrews, and the scripture is Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number two. Listen to this, and I want you to really get what the Holy Spirit wants to communicate. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. There was a reward set before the Lord that motivated him through his suffering. When Jesus was being crucified, when he was laying down his life, there was a joy set before him. There was something to which he was looking forward. That, in part, was the salvation of the lost. Do you realize that for every soul that is one, Jesus is reaping the reward of his suffering? If that joy was worth dying for, surely for us that joy is worth sacrificing for. He gave his life. He gave his all. Surely we can give our support. If Jesus was willing to die for us, can't we be willing to live for him? We talk about sacrifice. We talk about submitting to the Lordship of Christ. We talk about doing anything for the gospel, doing anything for the Lord, doing anything for souls. And then when it comes down to moments like this, we say, oh, maybe I won't do that. Now, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. Guilt is not how we should operate when it comes to giving, but I'm trying to put things in perspective for you. I want you to see giving as an opportunity to participate in what God is doing in the earth. And I want you to see it as an opportunity for Christ to reap the reward of his suffering. That was the joy set before him. Souls, lives being transformed, hearts being changed. That is why he gave his life. And that is why we give to the gospel. So I'm going to challenge you now. I want to challenge you to either or... I want you to either become a monthly supporter or give a one-time gift. Some of you can do both. But if you are prayerfully considering becoming a partner with this ministry, I'm asking you to do it now. Now is the time because now we have opportunity. There is an urgent need. Souls need to be saved. The gospel needs to be preached. And I'm asking you to become my partner. Partner with me at $10 a month or more. By going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Partner with us as we spread the gospel in the power of the Holy Spirit as we fight for the soul of a generation. 
You may also give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. Both your one-time and monthly gifts help us to continue to produce this content. Your gifts help us to continue to offer the Holy Spirit School for free. It's a free Bible school that's unheard of, and that's in thanks to our par partly in thanks to our partners and, of course, to the Lord. And your giving also funds all of our events that we do around the world. So become a supporter today. Sign up to become a partner for $10, $30, or even $100 a month, or give a one-time gift, or do both. But whatever you do, do something today and help us win souls as Christ reaps the reward of his suffering. Again, davidhernandezministries.com slash partner to partner, davidhernandezministries.com slash donate to give a one-time gift. Go and do that right now. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.